what? That was 100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour. What? <laughs> this is a driving review of the BMW i4 as the sporty M50 here with Thomas and Autogefühl. Let's go. Mid-size segment, but the BMW i4 is not an electrified 3 series, platform wise, yes, but it's more like an electrified BMW 4 series Grand Coupe. Soon more to that. Here in the front, we can already see a huge double kidney right there, but it's closed. It has this M badge right here because this is the sporty M50 version. There are also base versions available. Then in the blue accentuations here around the logo, signalizing the electric lineup and the the color here for today, a true Thomas blue, this is Portimao blue, but in the matte styling. So there's also a metallic Portimao blue available, but here then in the frozen style, how BMW calls it. Headlamps, standard LED, optional this year, the laser light then with blue accentuations. The length is at 4 meters 78 or 188 inches, so size-wise this place in a region of a Tesla Model 3. Price-wise, something different. More to that later. Wheels come from 17 inch to maximum 20 inch. Here the M50, the sporty model, comes with 18 inch standard and then also optional these huge 20 inch wheels. And when you go for these, you also have in the rear these extended mud guards because the tires are just so much wider. The door handles are very, very integrated and this matte paint is so lovely. However, unlike in the iX where it just looks like this and you, you know, can open it here, they also fold up a little bit. It's also interesting. Then you also have some wind efficiency gains here from the side mirrors and this is also when with this shadow line that you have it in a black contrast. Overall very cool and elegant styling and indeed is more like a 4 series Grand Coupe because it also has the fast back opening soon more to that. And suspension wise, this is really interesting, it automatically gets air suspension in the rear. But the dampers, nor front nor rear, are not adaptive. Optionally, you can get an adaptive suspension, it's called adaptive M suspension. That one is also standard than in the M50, but then also with an even stiffer setup here. Looking really forward to drive this one. Why didn't they go for air suspension in the front as well? They say they want a more direct contact to the road and this platform here actually does not allow uh, air suspension on the front axle just from the building space and they also want it to be a little bit more precise when turning in and turning out so that it doesn't you know change the weight of the car in the front too much. With the electric vehicles there will be no differentiation between M performance models and true M models. It's just the M models. That's a new thing coming here with the EV lineup. So M50 is kind of than a true M model for them. All we drive, one electric motor in the front, one in the rear. The rear one is stronger. If you go for the eDrive 40 version, you will only have rear wheel drive. This one here goes top speed 225 kilometers an hour or 140 miles an hour. The rear wheel drive version goes 190 kilometers an hour or 118 miles per hour. Guess you can live with that. In the lower part here, a diffuser style, strong fins here also in a vertical way. So overall, I think, especially in the three-quarter rear perspective, they really nailed the design, didn't they? Just a minor detail, by the way, these are these, you know, three-dimensional plastic number plates. And indeed, they are more sustainable because if you compare them to the metal plates, they here use less resources in production and also they can be recycled better than the classic ones. Interesting, right? Sadly, there is no frunk. This one here is going from the same assembly line like the BMW 4 Series Grand Coupe or the BMW 3 Series, so they are not using an EV purpose-built platform. This is one of the drawbacks then, but yeah, also their all-electric iX doesn't have a frunk either, so BMW, not so much about the frunks. However, we can also talk about the power figures and the battery figures. 81 kilowatt hours net, it's actually quite a reasonable size for that and projected range 500 kilometers or 300 miles. We'll see in the driving part if this is true. And acceleration figures here for the M50, 3.9 seconds to 1 kilometers or 62 miles an hour. And then 5.7 it would be for the E-Drive 40, the base model then with rear wheel drive. And recharging 11 kilowatt AC or 205 kilowatt DC then from 10 to 80 percent in 30 minutes at an according charging station. Car key looks like this. It's the classic 3 Series car key, but slim and light, and I really like it. Classic stuff. And then door handles once again fold out like this. What about the door closing sound? It's frameless though, and 
Yeah, here the door closing sound is really bad actually. Nice, however, the interior build quality, soft touch here and also how the handles are being you know, formed out. And so Hofmeister King design clue for the inside. And then the M50 comes with the M steering wheel, also with contrast stitches then here on the inside. The i4 in general with the blue BMW electric badge. And then seating wise is very interesting. These here are the sport seats and this is also the animal skin equipment because you can see it here when it's like in this, you know, separate, many separate, you know, parts. There you can see that this one then is from animal skin origin. However, standard here for the M50 model would be a surface mix of Alcantara and Sensatec Animal Free. And for the base seat, you start with fabric and Sensatec mix. And for the i4, you can also get pure Sensatec seats. They are also perforated, beige, black, brown or red. So four colors available. The ventilation function is not yet available, but BMW told me they are working on a, per, on a perforated, ventilated Sensatec seats. And this would actually also be the most choice or the most frequent choice for the majority of customers. And by the way, why did I switch to the big microphone here for the interior? Well, there are so many electric interferences that you hear that more on you know, the attachment microphone. This one here covers it a little bit better. Seating position here in the front, we really know it. It feels like in the 3 Series or like in a 4 Series, completely normal. It's not the most comfortable for long journeys, I have to say. Steering wheel, however, can be adjusted up and down, in and out and so on. So you feel that it's not an electric platform, otherwise you would have more space in the front. Headroom, by the way, without the panoramic roof, here 1 meters 86, 6 foot 1, enough left. But again, it's rather a little bit cramped. Cockpit overview, again, similar to 3 series or 4 series, but then you have this widescreen cockpit, 12.3 inch left, 14.9 inch right. This curved display this is, of course, pretty fancy, but the thing is, then there are no manual dials for the climate unit. Hmm. You do not have manual climate dials, however, at least a manual volume knob. In that M50 here, nice carbon fiber decor element. In the digital instruments, we can see left side the speed, right side the e-power, and on the lower end, then you see the recuperation. In the middle part, you can adjust what you want to see, for example, also map info. And the head-up display is, of course, always a nice option to have. It's nice that we still have traditional dials here, the steering wheel, left side for cruise control, and right side here, for example, for the volume. And then this operating system 8, completely new. This is one of the menu styles, but I think it looks kind of outdated a little bit. Climate unit always stays here in the screen. That's, of course, not that practical. You can use voice control. Yeah, but manual climate dials, most of us agree that it would be more practical. Then here on the left side, usually, you know this from the OS 7 or OS 6, here you have hotkeys to car play, that's actually quite good. But then again, below that would be the car menu, and that is then here hidden in this whole thing in live vehicle. But why can't I access this here right again at the hotkey part left? So I don't really get it. However, what's good is with the new system here, it's actually, you know, better as for the CPU power. So here, I'm zooming in and out at the map, this is actually very, very good overall. And here, the CarPlay, nice integration like this. And we also have a decent sound from that Harman Kardon sound system. Woo! Yay! This one still has the typical BMW Wings light in the top. Nice carbon fiber cover here for the middle part. And then typical inductive charging pad here. For your phone this one still gets really hot in the newer vehicles they also will have a ventilation system for that then adaptive cup holders right there and the shifting lever with a nice blue electric accentuation and here you can also pick the driving modes and the most power you will only have in the not only sport but sport boost mode classic control knob here as we know from the 3 series and also here underneath the armrest with a USB-C charger and some more space. Well, and here's the biggest problem about this vehicle. Once again, due to the platform, yeah, I can hardly fit here in the back part. Headroom is quite okay, but legroom, yeah, it's kind of not existent for tall, not existent for tall adults. And in the middle part, I mean, I can't even move here in the back part. It's not too uncomfortable from, you know, from the bench itself and so on, but just not enough space, definitely, considering the length of the car. Here, USB-C chargers and the rear climate unit. There you can see how big this middle tunnel is, once again derived from the combustion engine platform. 
and here cup holders for the middle armrest. Pricing wise around 60,000 euros or dollars for an entry model and here for the M50 around 70,000. That's of course way more expensive than the Tesla Model 3. However, you can also compare them to the more powerful ones. But what's better here with the i4 than with the Model 3, it does have a fast bake opening of the hatch. And that, you know, with one with a 6 6 one, I can send underneath it. Easy access in and out, maybe even putting a bicycle in and so on. This is of course the more practical approach. And this goes 470 to 1290 liters. And the length here, this is the channel where the length is measured properly still. Yeah, a little bit less than a meter or 40 inches in length. And the width here is a little bit more limited. This is then here 90 centimeters in width or about 35 inches in the height to the cover, 48 centimeters or 18 inches. Overall height and a little bit more. You can also just pop out this cover like this here. You can, by the way, have a 12 power supply. For folding the seats, you have to go around then to rear compartment like this. One third, two third split. However, you can also have this ski hatch. So then you can also do an individual split like this. And that's then the maximum setup. Thanks to the seats, I would be driving one meters 75 or 68 inches. Welcome to Thomas's Active Driving Lounge with the BMW i4 M50. Sport boost mode, maximum acceleration, let's go. <laughs> what, that was 100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour. What? <laughs> Holy moly. I mean, yeah, it was slight, a little bit downhill, that part. But what the hell? <laughs> You also heard this uh, sound <laughs> theme they have installed here, cooperation by Hans Zimmer. Whew, and uh, if you compare it, um, yeah, I mean, to something we heard before, Porsche Taycan or something, Audi e-tron GT, um, it's not the you know, strongest or harshest sound. It's still somewhat subtle, but definitely here in the sport boost mode, the strongest one. One more time where you can see the speed because of the different camera mount, let's go. My goodness, wow, this is really something. Yeah. The steering feeling, especially while accelerating, is very unusual BMW. It kind of even feels out of control a little bit. Hmm, not too happy with that, actually. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. Yeah, kind of mixed, no, not mixed feelings, bad feelings about this indeed. Yeah, but, you know, slalom wise, by the way, how the chassis reacts and so on. This is really superb, but once again, they're also feeling in the steering, mm, not to my liking indeed. All we drive, one electric motor in the front, one in the rear. The rear one is more powerful and the chassis itself and the steering and so on feels you know, kind of like BMW 3 Series or the 4 Series Grand Coupe. What is different here is definitely that we have more weight. So when we're, for example, going downhill, um, the car pushes a little bit more to the corner here. At the same time, we have a lower center of gravity because the battery pack is so low and centralized in the vehicle. And that again helps the agile driving feeling. So considering that this one here is way heavier than the combustion engine models, you don't feel it actually because it also kind of sucks you to the ground due to that low center of gravity and that's really cool. As for the steering feeling, mm, you know, it's actually quite okay. So I feel they also improved it if you compare it to the 3 Series and the 4 Series. Mm, there was also always this kind of issue that, you know, it didn't give too much feeling in low degree angle. Mm, it is still the case that you have more feeling here, you know, when you're at these, you know, 90 degrees turn, 90 degrees turn or something and not so much in this, you know, minus two plus five degrees, but I feel they have improved that a little bit. Um, maybe a little bit more progressiveness like here and a little bit less here. That would be my wish. Uh, but people can also maybe argue, yeah, okay, in that way I can, you know, in a more relaxed manner drive just straight on an autobahn or something. But overall, it's still fun to drive this car around. So 
it delivers great driving chili oh kids next to the road and always of course really careful recuperation as soon as I lift the throttle or also when I hit the brakes even more there's this adaptive function you can see it here in the instruments so when the car sees there's a car in front of me then there's harsher recuperation and that's to me a very good um, you know a very good way not to use a B braking mode like a, or a one pedal driving feeling because here in that way you kind of have both worlds so when there's no one in front of you the car is rolling when there's something in front of you the car is automatically applying a strong recuperation. I think that's a very interesting approach, definitely. And because sometimes you feel like, yeah, rolling is a little bit more comfortable. And sometimes strong recuperation is better and also safer, for example, when there's someone in front of you. And this adaptive recuperation mode could be actually the solution then for the future. So there's an also a better transition for people from ICE cars that they don't have this one pedal driving feeling at once. Um, so yeah, I think that that is really something, very interesting approach they found here for the regenerative braking. Oh, what's, what's your take on that? And now that boost uphill. Wow, <laughs> that sound experience definitely enhances the acceleration experience, definitely. And the thing that's really interesting, so uh, when you have that boost, um, the steering gets super light and that is a little bit um yeah i'm not sure is it because the car really literally lifts from the ground or something um but that's definitely a little bit irritating um yeah to me overall the steering is a little bit too light and i think definitely um especially if you go from a, um you know in a, in, a, in a sports mode it should actually be heavier by the way, here at 70 kilometers an hour, noise insulation is really great, so it's a very silent atmosphere here. Especially when you, for example, go back to a comfort mode and then you don't have this sound feedback and, and so on. So um, you can also use it as a cruiser and be like really, really calm. And the thing is really, since it's not on this EV platform, you know, for usage of space, that's negative, definitely. If you, however, seek a good transition from an IF, from a combustion engine vehicle to an electric vehicle, this might be something because, again, this car does not feel too different from a 3 series or from a 4 series, yet at the same time you have the electric boost and you still have a great handling really because of the low center of gravity. So it's a lot of fun to drive this one. Overall, it feels really crisp. It, yeah, I mean, it rather feels a little bit like the Mm, I would say, um, you know, M Performance model, 3 Series or 4 Series, like um, the 340i models. This one would be, I think, um, the best in comparison. The two M models, combustion engine, are a little bit stiffer as for suspension and so on. This suspension here, the M adaptive suspension, is tuned on a little stiffer note than it would be if you go for that ad adaptive option with the normal suspension. Mm, but I think it still represents a quite nice compromise. By the way, even in the comfort mode here, you also have enough power, for example, here overtaking maneuver of this tractor. Yeah, so <laughs> that was also 50 to 100, easily done. But really, the feeling in the steering wheel is not adequate to the vehicle. That is to me the biggest criticism point. And suspension-wise, you know, I'm not a fan of mixing suspension technologies. They have air suspension in the rear not at the front. Yeah, they said that due to this platform being used, um, usually you don't have air suspension there in the front. You cannot really do that. And they also want the more precise turning in and, and, and turning out and so on. And they would need to use um, you know, the, the bigger platform to offer air suspension in the front. Yet at the same time, they went for air suspension in the rear because of the heavy battery pack and also when you then put some load in the trunk and so on. But to me, this is not really mixing that well. It might be something because I'm really, really, you know, finely tuned my body to feel this, you know, soft nuances. But I feel that the rear is a little bit softer. It's actually quite good. And that the front is a little bit stiffer, sportier. And I don't think that's a good, it's a good mix. Either go for the smooth setup, both front and rear, or go for a stiff setup, front and rear. It's, you know, something, you know, talking about a very, very high level with a fine nose tuning. But still, 
I don't think that's a good decision. So definitely great boost, great handling. Steering feel, they need to improve that, make it a little bit stiffer, make it more natural. Yeah, and suspension technology wise, I think it would have been better if they left out the air suspension in the rear and just put some good adaptive, damp adaptive dampers on it, front and rear, and that would have been better definitely for the whole driving performance. We will also head out to some faster driving to test more about the noise insulation and so on. But overall, I think we can already say from driving, this is here for a transition from combustion engine to the electric vehicles. And of course, still yet yet to come, what about the efficiency and the range of this one here? And on the motorway, Oh, that was 50 to 1 on 30. Wow, that goes so quick. It's really astonishing. Wow. And now at a normal rotary speed of 120 kilometers an hour, so like 70 miles an hour, let's set it to the cruise control. It's also, you know, we can switch to normal cruise control and also the assisted driving mode. And then we also have a lane keeping assist. Let's see how that one plays out. So if it works in a very smooth way or not. Noise insulation so far at that speed, very good, very silent. Mm, of course, you don't have any sound then from normal electric drive if you're in a comfort mode, just the you know the electric sound experience there, the artificial one. So overall, you do get a calmer feeling because there's no like you know like sonorous sound from that engine running all the time. That might also be an effect where you say like, hey, that's calming for me, you know? So I'm also still looking forward for electric vehicles that are actually just mimicking the ICE sounds. I think it's, it, it would be a better idea than letting them all sound like spaceships, you know? So because we like to have, you know, like six cylinder or eight cylinder sounds because it touches something very basic in our, you know, feeling and understanding. So. There's even that theory that, it's, that it reminds of us being, you know, like a like an baby or even embryo inside the mother's body and feeling or hearing, feeling and hearing the heartbeat that these low frequency sonorous sounds are somewhat calming to us and that's why we like a V8 sound. And when this is, this is actually true, why can I just like select V8 sound, V6 sound here in that menu? It would just be software, you know? or open it for third-party applications, put an API in there, and then people can program that themselves or whatever, you know? So that would be really something um, that would be way cooler than giving millions uh, of dollars to the, you know, the, to the Hollywood composer, um, you know, for this I, I don't see like the big benefit in that one, you know? Make something more fun and cool. That's my take on it. Looking forward to your comments. So let's induce this lane keeping assist. Let's go a little bit to the left, yeah, to the right. Let's see how the lane is being kept when I'm moving up to the left. Yeah, there it is. So a subtle intervention. Then we also have a blind spot monitor. There it is, a yellow triangle. And when I put the turning indicator, then it's also flashing. So assistance systems, very well done, very well integrated as for that. And still a reasonable, motorway vehicle as i said earlier the offering of space already in the front is not a, you know, not that great actually everything feels in similar seating position wise and so on just as you would be driving a normal three series or a four series in that respect actually looking at the white screens here while driving by the way is pretty nice however what's a little bit irritating is climate control i change like when i want to have it come into my hands just manually here because in that climate menu you can either switch from balance to dynamic and that's it and i cannot really pick like where exactly the vents are coming from and i'm so used to that for example like more power to the feet or, or didn't it, or maybe i didn't find it or something but then it takes too long to find it so i yeah making things more complicated once again with these new software iterations and now let's go once again to the sport boost mode because 130 kilometers an hour to let's see whatever that's a 200 kilometers an hour 125 miles an hour for this traffic situation definitely enough and still good noise insulation and really stable on the road so yeah, I mean, the surplus in weight is in this case maybe even a good thing in that uh, case, but 
Once again, the steering feeling, that is the thing that is lacking to be one with the vehicle in that case. Well, and as for the average energy consumption, like 19 kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers. So that's some 30 kilowatt hours on 100 miles means a range of 430 kilometers or 270 miles. That is not as much as promised, but still you know, somewhat decent result, considering it's not an all EV platform. Well, it was critical with some aspects, but nevertheless, the rigidity of the chassis and the driving dynamics and the overall fun and also calmness on the road with this vehicle is excellent, just as we know from the 3 Series or 4 Series Grand Coupe. So there's no denying the fact that they're still ahead in these hardware issues if you also compare Tesla which then, you know, has some other advantages. You can check them out, Tesla Model 3 versus Polestar 2, our review. And of course, also maybe, yeah, Porsche Taycan rear-wheel drive. That might also be a competitor here, especially of the M50. See you at these videos.